All right, what's going on guys? Coach Joe here at the Lion's Den, located in Colmar, PA or Hatfield area. If you're ever here, come check it out. This isn't just where I train, like it's open to everybody. Uh, but I thought this was a fun idea. I put on my Instagram on if I should do some Olympic lifting. Okay, as you guys know, I have a past history with Olympic lifting. I competed for a few years. So basically went high school, college sports, then it went to CrossFit. CrossFit led to Olympic weightlifting. Did that for a few years, then I got into strongman. Uh, so I have some decent numbers, right? We'll put up footage throughout this video where you guys can just see what I've done in the past. I have no idea where my numbers are at right now. But I just wanna have something fun to do, make a video of. Uh, so we're just gonna do, working our way up to just like a heavy clean for the day. You know, just a nice single, see where I'm at, compare it to the past, how my body's feeling, and I'll give you guys some tips throughout. We got Sebastian on the camera, he's an absolute machine. Make sure you check him out on Instagram, and uh, we're just gonna dive into it. I'm doing a warm up now. Got it from uh, Phil Sabatini. I keep doing it because I like it so much, and I met Phil when I went on a work trip. He's uh, the owner of East Coast Gold Weightlifting out of Virginia. Has a ton of just stud athletes, very knowledgeable guy. 40 years old, clean jerk 405. Like, tell me that's not impressive. 40 years old, 405, and he's like, I don't know, maybe like 200 pounds? Insane. So, just doing some of those uh, movements that you guys have been seeing throughout the video, and then uh, we'll just get into it. We're gonna have fun, man. Sebastian's here, he's my boy. We're gonna crush it, and uh, let's do it. So I just, well obviously I had to put the Olympic lifting plates on because it only looks proper for what we're doing. Got my Olympic lifting shoes on, but the real deal is once my knee sleeves go on, you know it's gonna be legit. Uh, so right now we got 135 on the bar. Main issues are gonna be mobility for me and just like time and technique, okay? I think strength-wise I'll be fine, uh, but I haven't done this in a very long time, so it's gonna be just proper timing with the bar path. Throughout this video, we're gonna have videos linked above for you, for you to kinda get more in-depth tips. I'm gonna go over them pretty quickly, uh, but I just wanna go over things, you know, as we're going through this workout so you guys can try to implement it on your own. timing's off. I really have to make sure that I'm getting all the way, you know, through that pull, big extension, getting under the bar quick, not letting the bar crash on my shoulders or anything like that. So we'll see, we'll keep working up. So real quick with the setup, the clean is different than a deadlift. So a lot of people get that wrong. A lot of people get set up in their clean or their deadlift position for a clean. Uh, but for this, so really, I want my feet about hip width, okay? Toes are gonna be a little bit out, uh, similar to like a squat essentially. And then from here, hands go on the bar, bars right over top of midfoot. And I'm gonna just get in this position where my knees are a little bit over the bar, rather than a deadlift like this, okay? The bars will be more, Midfoot, my knees are coming down because we're doing a jump motion. So we want that triple extension. Disclaimer, <laughs> big disclaimer here. This is all works for me, anecdotal. I don't do Olympic lifting anymore. I don't really coach Olympic athletes whatsoever. There's other channels that are a lot better than that. Uh, but this just was goes through my mind. Things may have changed. I'm just having fun. So take it with a grain of salt, uh, but just kind of what's going through my mind real time as we set up. Now I'm at 225 right now. When I get up in weight, typically uh, it makes me, or it forces me to really open my hips, get that, that pull, you know, that, that extension before I drop under the bar. With lighter weights, it's a little bit easier because it's light to not do those things. But with heavier weight, it's gonna force me to have better technique or else I won't make the lift, right? Every little uh, 
technique, millimeter, centimeter, caterpillar, you know, wh whatever you want to put in there uh, matters when it comes to Olympic lifting. I want to sit my toes on the catch. I want to land more midfoot. That was way better. All right, so first one, yeah, I in my toes. So I just want to catch midfoot. I have the whole base of my foot on the ground when I catch. Weight feels pretty light. I think we go right to 275. What do you think, Sebastian? I think so. All right, All right 275. We're hook gripping. Yes! Okay, we're ready. I'm feeling it, I'm feeling myself. Let's get it. I mean, I had a little bit of bar crash on that. I mean, I feel, I'm feeling good. There's a lot of potential in the tank here. It's just a stupid technique. So on that one, what happened was I was going down, the bar was still floating above my shoulder. So it kind of caught me and we call that bar crashing. So what that means is my timing's off. So I really got to get that extension and that catch to simultaneously happen at the same time rather than creating too much space where the bar is floating above and then it basically slams down on me. So this is 295. We're going to be well in the 300s. Uh, we'll see. I mean, my goal, it'd be really cool Hit a 405. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. 315 on the bar. Let's smoke this sucker. So one thing I'm really trying to focus on, uh, especially with the clean, is getting those elbows under really quick and getting into the front rack. A lot of times, people aren't quick enough to get those elbows under, and it's gonna pull you forward. Typically, you miss the lift, uh, or it's gonna cause a crash, or it's just in an unstable position. So when I'm doing that front rack transition into the squat, I'm trying to push that bar so it rests basically right here, so my delt creates a shelf. The bar is here, and it's almost pushing back into my throat. Uh, so that's kind of one of the biggest tips I see with people. Uh, the other thing, and I got this from Phil Sabatini, East Coast Gold, is instead of thinking about a pull, think about pushing. What I mean by that is pushing your feet through the floor, right, to maintain all points of contact of your feet, um, instead of, you know, shifting your weight into your toes or into your heels too much, or preventing the, the early arm bend. Okay, we see a lot of people doing early arm bend. Um, so try to keep those arms as straight as possible and pushing your feet through the floor uh, to just have a better pull and better technique. And really what it comes down to a little bit of thing is bar path. Making sure that that bar path is coming straight up and into the cast position. We don't want it bouncing off our body and we also don't want to hit it around like an arc. That typically can put the weight back and almost you could fall over or uh, you're going to be in your heels too much. So we want a nice, beautiful bar path. I think we can PR the clean. That was 405. My front squat feels super solid. Uh, dude, I mean, are we gonna send it? be smart I've banged myself up enough I've tore and injured enough things to kind of know when to stop being an idiot but right now I'm feeling good so I'm gonna keep pushing it uh, unless Sebastian tells me otherwise so this is a uh, 437 437 Come on, Joey, let's go 
We'll get it. We'll get it. It's all right. Yeah, 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 I'm fine. I'm fine. Take your watch off, baby. I got it. I'm a little. I gotta not be a, afraid of the weight. It's in my head. I gotta be a longer pull, better front rack. Exactly what I was talking about earlier in the video. I had a slow transition, and that bar just folded me like a freaking mattress. Sebastian like first saw that happening and I totally ignored him. He's like, you should probably put collars on the bar. I was like, Psh. I was like, this is Olympic lifting. It's not CrossFit. We don't put collars on our barbell. And then of course, <laughs> freaking I feel everything starts sliding off one side. Uh, that was kind of fun though. All right, so something that I see a lot of uh, either beginners or athletes I work with is they use their arms to bend the bar, okay? When we're doing the clean, uh, from what, the way I've learned and the way that I've practiced it is I keep my arms straight and when I'm in my setup, I'm thinking about flexing those triceps so it prevents me from bending and pulling uh, the bar with my arms, okay? So what I mean by that is when we're in our setup, okay, I'm flexing those triceps straight down to the ground, okay? And I'm not keeping my arms bent as I pull. So they're straight and as I come up, they stay straight, okay? And then from there, I can jump shrug and get to the clean. What I see people doing is when they're here, okay, they either jerk the bar, which is never good in really any lift, or as they're pulling, okay, they start to early bend the arms this way and kind of pull the bar in with their, their elbows bent, and then they try to throw the bar up. So it's just inefficient when we bang the bar or bend our arms, typically it kicks the bar out in front of us. And we don't want to do that. So think about flexing those triceps and then pushing the floor away with your legs. So when I'm here, okay, I'm driving through the floor with my legs, all right? The other thing that I see, especially with the high schoolers that I work with, if you guys didn't know, I'm a high school training and conditioning coach and I also coach the sport of lacrosse, is when they're in the weight room, they get into a good setup, right? But then right as they pull, they shoot their hips up. So if you wanna come, yeah, we'll come from the side real quick. So what I see is they'll be here, which is great, but instead of driving with their hips down through like this, right? They pull and they shoot their butt up like this, and it almost turns into like a stiff leg deadlift, okay? We wanna make sure that we keep that butt and our hips down, our chest up, and we're pushing that floor away from us to maintain an upright torso and a nice uh, straight up bar path. All right, so uh, when I was playing sports in high school, yeah, as an athlete, I lifted all the time. Then from there, I went to college, played college lacrosse for a little bit, and then I got into CrossFit when CrossFit was pretty much like gaining momentum. Uh, this is around like 2012. Uh, so I competed in CrossFit. The big thing with me is I hated all the long distance stuff. I love short intense Metcons. I like lifting heavy weight, but I was really drawn to Olympic weightlifting. I thought Olympic weightlifting was the beauty in strength sports where you see these guys moving incredible amounts of weight, but there was just such like, like perfection with it. And I love detail. So it's also in the Olympics because it's one of the hardest things to do, right? It's an Olympic sport. So it just shows you the technique. If you're off, by, like I said before, one millimeter, one centimeter, that can cost you the whole lift. And I get really obsessed with trying to get better at stuff like that. So I did that for years. Uh, and then I ended up actually having a knee injury. And after I got done with that recovery, I realized in my head um, that I thought Olympic lifters were absolute studs. I'm not taking away from them whatsoever because they're just phenomenal athletes. But for as much weight as they lifted, I sometimes thought they didn't look like absolute monsters. And when I saw strong men, I was like, yo, these guys are lifting insane amounts of weight. They look like freaks. That's what I want to look like. And that's the kind of weight I want to put up. So I got into strongman uh, and that kind of led me to where I'm at today. And I did really well in strongman because I had the technical skill 
from Olympic lifting, and then I transferred over to strongman. So maybe I wasn't as raw uh, strong as a lot of the guys I was competing against, but I used the technique to my advantage by doing the push jerk, the split jerk, understanding triple extension, kinesthetic awareness that I grabbed from Olympic lifting, then implemented that all into my strongman competitions. I still have a huge respect for Olympic lifting. I think it's a ton of fun, I love doing it, uh, and I do it here and there, but strongman kind of has like won my heart over. But at the same time, when I see guys, you know, especially those lighter guys, right? Just clean and pressing and snatching, crazy amounts of weight, blows my mind. Uh, so if you guys wanna watch some of my older videos, you can go check those out. There's a lot of tips, there's a lot of you know technique videos and competition, stuff like that, which I'd recommend. Uh, but at the same time, I no longer really do that. This is kind of just like my, uh, my cool trick I can throw in every now and then and kind of just scratches the itch when I want to throw down for a video here and there. All right guys, so that's pretty much it for the video. Hopefully you had fun. I had a blast doing this. Sebastian absolutely crushed it uh, with all the, the videos that we got. Uh, so if you guys are new to the channel, please like the video, subscribe, check us out on the Discord. We have a lot of programs available as well, even some Olympic lifting uh, programs and Olympic lifting and uh, strength training as well. I kind of combine the two. That's gonna be on the link below uh, down. You can just check out, click that. Uh, but once again, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And as always, stay a lean, mean strength machine. Catch up with you guys next time. Peace.